welcome everyone. Today we are together entering the phase of the Burger Solar Festival and our special guest today is Gloria Krug who for many decades been working in the field of education, distributing the, the ageless wisdom seeds in people's minds and hearts. And it's my honor to welcome Gloria. Thank you very much, Gloria, and welcome to our circle. I'm glad to be here and to experience the alignments out of this group. It's, it's a marvelous unity. Thank you. So, so Gloria, the floor is yours and we ask you please share some seeds of your wisdom with us and your experience and I'm sure we will we'll have many questions for you so we'll expand this conversation leading to our meditation at the end of the webinar. Okay, I'll try to um, satisfy all of that. <laughs> we do have, um, I do have a long, long life of experience and um, most of it has been involved with the ageless wisdom because as soon as I discovered it, it was the way to live life. And I don't understand in some ways how anyone can do without it. I know I wouldn't want to do without it. We. Um, after studying for many years, there was an opportunity um, to hold classes because people were asking questions. And um, so I started having classes. And then after, and that was back in the 50s and 60s, and then, then uh, in um, 1977, we started the School of Ageless Wisdom as a non-profit corporation. And uh, now that has lasted for over 40 years. And we start the classes for people not as self-help. This is only for people who are wanting to be of service. So that the people who come to the School of Ageless Wisdom are people who enter through an interview where they are questioned specifically to discover their attitudes to life and their desire to be of service and um, and then all of the books of the Ageless Wisdom cover almost everything you can imagine in relation to human development and since we work with the seven planes, the, um, the physical plane and the astral plane and then the emotional level are considered as the personality that is under perfection to the extent that the individual uh, can use the purification of the soul to do so. And in the school, we use the specific classes for people to learn how to uh, have a physical body and brain to register the information 
that they can invoke from the soul and then gradually discover how to unify with that soul and move through life um, in a way of service so that their outer expression is an expression of service. After we had been having classes for many years so that the same people are involved that were there 30 years ago and 40 years ago and they're all working together in the same way to be of service in relation to the teachings that we have studied and because we are dealing right now with the energies that are impacting the planet in relation to Virgo and this is dealing directly with nurturing and fusing with the Christ and we are in the period of renunciation and detachment in preparation for the full moon um, so that we're all involved in that at the same time along with all the servers all over the planet and we do not consider ourselves more than a very small part of that um, entire world group of servers so that whatever we invoke and whatever we are able to evoke into the planetary ethers will be received by everyone. Then after so many years of having the classes, there were many children involved with the School of Ageless Wisdom and we decided to start a children's school to teach the, the information that is suggested in the book Education in the New Age. And before, and just as it was starting, I attended a meeting in New York at the Lucis Goodwill Seminar. And it was uh, luckily and, and probably a very purposeful um, opportunity to hear Dr. Robert Mueller, who was the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations at the time, speak on what he thought should be the education of all the children on the, in the planet. And um, his plan was so simple that it just couldn't be ignored. I thought if we're going to start a school, we should use this curriculum. And so I came back to Texas where the school exists and told everyone that was interested in starting a school for the children that we should use the World Core Curriculum because when I told them the basics of it and the categories, they completely agreed and we started it. When I asked Robert Mueller for the information on the categories, he said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any of that. I only know the categories and what they should cover, but it's up to the people who implement it to discover how to globalize the particular subjects that are used. And um, perhaps this would be a time when you could show that curriculum. The first category, and think of this, think of when you're listening, every child should have these four things. 
The first thing is our planetary home and place in the universe. And this deals with every aspect of science in any field, so that in a school it is very easy to find the ways to implement, implement that. And that, that includes all the maths and the sciences that anyone can have in a school from the very first right on through to high school and even beyond. Then the second one is the human family. And this deals with humanity as a unique species, including every race and their whereabouts as a unity. So that when this is presented to children, they don't think of people of different colors as being different. They think of them as being part of the human species. And it takes away all the bias that would be there ordinarily. Then the third one is our place in time. And this again is taught in relation to all of humanity every aspect of known history and allows a child to know all of human successes and human failures as a species on our planet. The mistakes we have made in the wars and the lack of cooperation and so forth, they see them as human problems, not as problems of one particular nation or any particular race that has begun this, the, the, uh, that part of history. It changes the way they think of life as they grow up and the way they see especially how humanity must learn to cooperate and to love one another. Then in the fourth category is the miracle of individual human life. And for every child, wherever they are, there is something that is presented to them. Some religion of some kind. We discovered that there are more than 5,000 names for God among the human languages. And they accept all with a loving heart for the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of mankind. Children grow up with understanding and without a bias when they have that knowledge from the beginning and keep it in the factual place that it should be for all of us to understand. We usually because now things have become very chaotic through the years in our relationships on the planet, we have had serious problems, but we implemented, but as far as the Robert Mueller School was concerned, those children learned we kept it going until we had graduates for 16 years. We had many certified teachers in the Ageless Wisdom School. And then we also had babies born. And so we began right at birth to proceed with the purifications that were possible to do. And, um, and all of the parents of the children, one of them attended the school with the children, with, the, with their child, to help with whatever the teachers would need, and whatever might be required. After we had been 
um, they weren't all of the same age, of course, and so at a certain point, the children who were the oldest were, had gone on to college and had left the school. So at that point, we did, the younger children said, we want to do what they were doing. And the major outer expression that we were having was a model United Nations. Robert Muller suggested that for everyone to understand the United Nations is one of the most important parts of a child's life. And we thought if they learn that very young, there are model United Nations for college people and for high school children everywhere, but no one had thought that elementary school children should learn about the United Nations and presented it that for them to be part of a model. So when they said they wanted to do it, we decided, why not? And that's when we started contacting schools to see if they would like to have children participate in the program. That was 27 years ago. Since then, we've held this program every year for 27 years. This is our 28th year. And during that time, from schools all over the world, different and all across the United States, children have come to be delegates for the global elementary model of United Nations. And this year it will be given in 2017. So each child studies and chooses a country, every school chooses countries that they want to represent at the conference and now it has become so large that we have it at a college, hold it at a college, but we coordinate it from here. And um, we start with the children, um, with the schools uh, registering with us, and then they go on from there. This has been going on now, as I said, until we have had more than 7,500 children come as delegates. Um, there are, we use high school children for secretariat, and children can come from fourth grade to eighth grade and no adults are allowed to participate in the actual program when it's held at the college um, each year. He is showing the picture in this one is the General Assembly where you see the children from the different countries and they have their placards there at the tables. And then there are each one of 10 committees every year. And the children actually study the true world problems that the United Nations is dealing with. And then they write resolutions that they think their country would want to have happen. And after that, they go to the conference in the spring that's held every year, 
and they debate their resolutions and find out what other nations would think about it. And they learn so much about what the United Nations does in each one of the committees that they will always know that there is a way for the United Nations and for the nations of the world to cooperate and find a way into harmony. In relation to the to the um, time that we're in and right this moment at the in the um, Aquarian age starting with the seventh ray coming in very strong. And for those who have studied it, it is not like any other ray. And combining that with the first and second ray, you have the ashram of synthesis and the energy of synthesis. And the seventh ray just now is creating a situation where people of every level of development are able to do magic with their thoughts, whether they know it or not. And because of the love of the Aquarian Age coming in, it will make a big difference for humanity as a whole. And we need to pay attention to it because the things that we see that are out of order cannot be looked at with those eyes. We have to be able to see everything that's going on as part of a planetary process underway so that we can hold out of the conflict completely, stay out of the conflict completely with our thoughts and to realize that the process that's underway is leading to harmony. Every part of it is leading to harmony. No matter how ugly it may look, it is leading to harmony. And remember that at all times and under all circumstances, the logos of the planet is truly in charge. Um, do you think there might be any questions at this point, Alexander? Um. Uh, yeah, um, we can open now the floor for questions and comments and I just re remind our audience that um, by default everyone is muted even though we keep visualization that we're sitting on in a circle and anyone is welcome to contribute uh, to the group process. So uh, in order to share something or ask something please use the function raise your hand. It's a button on the control on your control panel um, and when you do that we will unmute you and uh, also you can write your uh, comments or questions in the question section of the control panel. So please uh, we invite uh, everyone to contribute to our conversation today. I think what you just said, Gloria, is very important and um, I think it's a challenge for every one of us to, on one hand, to be realistic and see the depths of all the processes that's happening now and at the same time to keep the vision and to keep our focus upward 
and forward on that vision of the plan as it's been open to us and to maybe you can share with your life experience on that so how to keep that double focus while you know the reality but keep the focus on the plan well of course the most important thing is to make sure that every day is begun with a an alignment that follows you throughout the day uh, if you don't do it you're liable to get surprised before before you know it you're seeing something that you're disagreeing with and which brings thoughts that are not of the highest nature and so the alignment is the most important thing and to hold it throughout the day the thing is right now that's so vitally important is that there's no one on the planet who can do this besides the disciples only the people who are part of the new group of world servers they don't have to be involved with any particular organization related to specifically the new group of role servers but we recognize each other as having a loving heart at all times and refusing to have a negative attitude toward and moving into those levels where the where the combatants are working against one another and refusing to move in harmony. We have to stay above that and to bring in the highest energy that there is for it to work. And so you have to make up your mind that you are not just part of the human family. You are part of the fifth kingdom in nature now. You belong to the kingdom of the soul. And in that kingdom, even though in a physical body with all the physical problems that go along with that, you are living an example for humanity to see in relationships that are loving and relationships that are from the heart and relationships that see harmony in process. I think that that is a, a full description of that part of what is necessary there is always work to be done and we think that seeing wherever there is light in manifestation then we must be able to add to it with the light of the soul and to support it does that cover some of what you wanted me to say uh, thank you yes and that's actually the main labor uh, for all of us as disciples and I absolutely agree with you that's that's the main duty and responsibility of all disciples and actually if you have that it means you on the path you on the discipleship path so that's the criteria one of there's, there's something that um, we have given to us or is told is actually the Christ's own mantra the great invocation and people use it all over the planet who are at different levels of development and some are saying the words 
and the words are meaningful and they do have a specific intent, but disciples need to use the great invocation in a way that covers much more than just the words. That invocation is capable to magnetize the power of the avatar of synthesis and the spirit of peace, who are both extraplanetary entities. But not unless it is said from the highest place in your consciousness and held in the highest understanding that that mantra is to fulfill the laws that have been set in motion for light and love and the power of the will of God to manifest and it is up to us to do it. There is no one else that can do it. We are the hands and feet of the Logos. I'm sorry to be so intense, but I believe that we have to be intense in this situation. Yeah, it's uh, no intent. It's no intensity. It's the, the it's the focus, and I absolutely agree with you that it's so easy to lose the meaning of the words, especially of mantras that we pronounce every day how to remember that those words are magical formulas that work only if we put our intention there, if yes. the focused will to good evoked by our intention and meditation go through that, then they work. Yes. Yes. I do believe that anyone who says the Great Invocation, even in the lightest way, is still using a magical formula. But it's only those who have the consciousness of the meaning of to go along with it that have the full power of the possibilities. And each one of us, if we think of it that way, this mantra is the mantra that you and I, as individuals, can use as part of a service to the plan of the planet in a way that brings in the highest possible energies. And it is exalting to know that it's possible to do and it keeps you from letting those words become rote and just simply making sounds. They are evoke, invoking and evoking simultaneously. I wonder when you teaching children the these principles the, you you practice this uh, model the UN and it's certain uh, it's format and it's uh, I, I believe it's very exciting for the children but can do children actually get besides that formal aspect and do they actually can see and feel and live that essence of that unity that the whole idea of United Nations manifests. How do you communicate, if it's necessary, or maybe it's just intrinsic in kids, this notion of unity? The, the charter of the United Nations is very important in the work of the model United Nations. And if you read the charter, 
It's like reading one of our spiritual ages wisdom books. It is saying that all humanity is one, that we are all working together, and that we must find a way to cooperate. And when the children study that, it makes sense to them. They want to make everyone cooperate and to help everyone cooperate because that's part of what the, um, the resolutions that they write and to solve the problems. There are so many different kinds of problems all over the planet, but they all require cooperation from everyone in order to solve them completely. There are many areas right now that are under great duress and that all of humanity could help to solve it. And it's working. It is going in that direction. I guess one thing that's important to remember is that this Aquarian age is a 2,500-year age. So we cannot really expect all of the solutions to happen overnight. And for some of us, and probably for myself included, it will require the next incarnation to achieve what I want to see accomplished. But I don't want to waste any time in the meantime to do everything that I can do. And I hope it's the same for every one of us. So the children do see through the charter that there is a way to cooperate. We have a um, situation for a while where some of the schools were working in competition with one another to get their resolutions passed. And I meditated on it and decided that we should have a peace prize. And as soon as we instituted the peace prize, which is based on the person cooperating and following every part of the United Nations Charter, the cooperation and help and instituted the peace prize, the competition has dropped to zero. Everyone is trying to help now. They still want to get the solutions for their own countries, but not at the expense of other countries. Different. I wonder how we can come up with the same price for the actual nations and the governments that they. <laughs> well, there they have goals. Marty, would you tell the sustainable development goals? It's the. <laughs> to tell you about the sustainable development goals that we have that the United Nations is working on. And for people who don't know about them, it's very important for us as disciples to know that. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody that would participate in this um, kind of a seminar is already aware of what the United Nations is working on in relation to the Sustainable Development Goals, right? Yeah, yes, that's um, one of the biggest uh, topics that have been for the last few years in the focus of the World Service everywhere. And actually, uh, we do our little small part of contributing to this work. Doing every new moon, uh, we take one of the Sustainable Development Goals and we focus on it and we meditate. So the 2025 initiative suggests uh, that through our 17-month 
we would bring our focus to each of the goals, uh, our meditation, and aligning it with the specific astrological energies of each sign. So yes, uh, I'm sure people are aware of it, but you still can, please, uh, if you could just briefly give a abris of it, because it's always good to bring into and what is the purpose behind. Well, what we have, um, since we started given so early in the 90s, we've kind of followed ever since the, um, the conference in Brazil in 92, and uh, all the, that, um, that were kind of predicted by the teaching. more and more been um, fulfilling that prediction and the, the uh, working on the sustainable development ever since the, um, the first conference a couple of decades ago, and um, it is Gemin um, yearbed those topics so that the children who have participated in it are aware also. I mean, I think that if you guys have been doing the meditation, nations work as, far as bringing the world together towards would be it, basically. Um, and what that means to children, just from this one part places on the planet that are studying these things the way we are, but to have the, all of these um, evolving goals, the Millennium Development Goals, and then becoming the Sustainable Development Goals in the conference last year, in, of the two biggest um, polluters on the planet agreeing to, <laughs> to sign on to that. I mean, all these things are just... Um, we the working out of our meditation. Thank you, Marty. And uh, I think that's uh, of the work that we could do. It's uh, on bringing our meditative focus on the work that the United Nations is doing, and specifically the Sustainable Development Goals, because it's, uh, it's just a, a framework. It's a, it's a great framework, but it, it's not binding. And so no government has any obligations to follow and to fulfill those SDGs, uh, but it's only the goodwill of people uh, that can actually push that agenda, and it's a certain beacon, uh, again, because the framework, it's just a, a grid framework, that's how we all together can work, it's like, in a way, it's a coordination beacon for all of us, and it's good for us that with power of our meditation, we just give the power to that beacon. What's well, just, so if, if we think back to the year that we just the year that we started Gemin and the year that the United Nations um, in the early 90s had the first conference in Brazil, um, how much has changed? How much the world has changed in the consciousness of humanity to have these things possible by the nations is just um, kind of mind-boggling if, if you just think about the evolution that fast. I mean, it must, it must um, show us that these things have to change that much more in the next um, nine years. <laughs> it's, really a, it's really a wonderful process that's underway, and that um, for for people who have never done so, um, listen to the speeches of any of the people, of any of the ambassadors that speak at the United Nations, if you listen to them, they sound like 
they are leashes. They sound like they care more about cooperation and so forth. There are very few that are speaking only on their own behalf and don't care about all the others. But almost everyone discussing the property, the problems from the from the point of view of initial consciousness. And it's thrilling to hear them speak. There was one raised hand uh, by Alex Radcliffe. Uh, Alex, I will unmute you. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hi. 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 Um, I wanted to ask Gloria about the Model United Nations, um, the children's response to that, uh, following your question. Would that not be um, based on the fact that they've been brought up, you know, uh, in this ageless wisdom teaching in this school. I mean, has it started really young? And I just wondered if you could tell us more about the actual school and the curriculum and the name. I didn't quite catch it, and if it's still going and where it is. Well, no, the in the school was only held to. Uh, implement that curriculum until we had graduates. And no one was paid a salary. No teacher received a salary and there was no tuition. And so we did that for 16 years. And the children grew up with, with the uh, process that is truly um, discipleship consciousness and some of them are still involved with the ageless wisdom and uh, but they've moved on in their lives now and are in college and gone beyond but the people who send children to the um, to the model United Nations come from public schools all over the world okay they're not part of the of our school. They, they only, it only started with our school, but the other schools are public schools that that know that we're doing it, and that they have children. They have someone in the school that wants to um, yeah. have the children learn public speaking, which is very vital. They learn to debate which is very important. They learn to think and to solve problems. And so it is an educational program that based on the United Nations Charter is happily cooperated with from schools everywhere. We didn't have schools coming from other countries for a while, but now we do. Now schools are finding out about it and sending delegates from other countries to come to the model United Nations with grade school children and intermediate school children. <laughs> and they, they have written their resolutions and they come here and they play their part and they study that country for the whole year and model it according to that country's own views, but they don't know the ageless wisdom. And this is what is the most exciting thing about the model United Nations to me, is that it is inspired completely by the hierarchy. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, this, this model United Nations program, this takes place around the world. Um, but I didn't. I didn't realize you were offering a program as well as your school. So you have a school. The school is no no longer in operation except okay. as a coordination of the of the uh, model United Nations. We still coordinate that, where no one else does. Yeah, we're the only coordinators of of the elementary. Model United Nations, 
but they had to uh, cooperate or ask a college in Dallas to cooperate with us because they have room for 500 people in their auditorium and that's how many people are there every year or more. Peace Prize is a wonderful idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And Every so, teacher could use that. Who's the most oh, peaceful? Who can create the most peace? <laughs> anyone, who has, uh, anyone who has five children that are interested <laughs> can, can sign up by contacting uh, us and, and then send the children to the conference in, in May. And they, they get a handbook to study and to know uh, how to follow the rules of procedure for the, because it's not, um, it's very professional. It, they go by the Robert Frills order and they follow every procedure exactly. They write the resolutions exactly and so that they are all uh, written with every line numbered and so forth and they send those in and then they send a person to come to take that. And it also, in studying the countries, they're learning, two o'clock. They're learning geography all over the planet because they maybe maybe um, Alexander would put the pictures of some of the countries that they 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 do a a um, what is called a display to to have at the college on one of the days and those displays are uh, shown in the hall of the um, you need to go to the displays of the countries. Is it below? Yes. Uh, yeah. Going down. Okay. There they are. There you are. You're, you're going past them. <laughs> Those are the displays of the countries. They bring a display of the country that they are uh, representing. And they have to study it all year. So they're learning so much about every country because they don't have the same country every year. And um, they also don't represent the same committees every year. And how many actual uh, delegations uh, attend uh, from different countries attend this uh, model, uh, elementary model, UN? Um, from uh, we've had we've had groups that have come from um, Taiwan. Um, we most recently last year, uh, the last several years, there have been a group from Turkey and. Uh, Russia has sent a group from Moscow for uh, over 10 years, I think. We had groups from Mexico coming for a while until the violence on the border stopped them from bringing their bus. So they haven't been able to come for the last few years. And, um, and Costa Rica, Guatemala, Colombia sent a group for a few years. Um, it, it just depends. It depends on um, who contacts and registers us and then um, with us, I mean, and then the um, what they can manage. You know, it's different every year or so. We have, um, we have several groups from different states around the, the U.S. that come now. It's not, um, not only Texas, but, but um, we're really glad that the people of Texas are getting the benefits of this. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, um, there is something that's, um, that is a natural problem for sending a delegation from other countries because they, the cost of flying to the, to the conference is um, a um, hindrance. And so uh, what we're doing now is trying to help other places start their own model United Nations. And that will take some time, but 
because it takes years to get it to a place where it is functioning very uh, smoothly. But it does, it is, and anyone can learn to do it. And in the meantime, they can send delegations here. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so if you have if you have four or five children that each one want to represent a committee, well, or more, four or five. Some schools have sent as many as of oh, forty or fifty kids, or forty or fifty children to come to the conference, and each one and and represent two or three countries instead of just one. So it's um, it's a, it's a thrilling experience because you know that it's helping to bring harmony to the planet. Those children are going to grow up and know exactly what's going on. They know what the problems are, and they know what it takes to solve the problems. And so it it's a it's a completion of some of the work. Uh, put into outer operation. We really think that every kid on the planet ought to have the opportunity to go <laughs> in elementary school. The younger, the better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you. There, there are more questions that that um, uh, come in in the question section. So there is a question from. Avon Madison. So I will post it that everyone could read it. Um, so Avon says, uh, Dear Gloria, you are an inspiration for all the new group of world servers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know you are too. <laughs> And the question, now, through your model of the School of Ageless Wisdom and the World Core Curriculum and the Model UN, you have created a foundation for, um, of building a culture of peace through education. Would you share how the ashram of synthesis has been your constant inspiration in furthering the outworking of the plan? I think since it's part of the teaching and we study it in our classes, that is the major part of our classes, is studying the teaching and discussing and applying the part that we know. And the ashram of synthesis is new. The first and the second and the seventh rays together create that synthesis. It's, it's suggested on I think page it's in the um, in the book the externalization of the hierarchy where it it spells out how the ashram of synthesis will happen and that it will have the seventh ray as an important part of it and then the first and second ray are automatic because they're the will of God and the love of God. And uh, these are things that are, uh, that over the years have become bred into our consciousness in such a way that we can see exactly how the new things are uh, in process and working um, because it's right before our eyes. And, and while the unseen is what we have to pay more attention to as disciples, we have to realize that we're living in the world of illusion and that that illusion can only be changed through the truth that we all know by not letting anything interfere with it in our consciousness. To realize that if we're moving into the fifth kingdom, 
at first what happens is a person is only in the light of the soul part of the time. So they're going back and forth from human to spiritual, from human to spiritual. But the true being is only the spiritual. All of the personality is left at death and goes back to the original stuff that it came from. The astral plane and the physical plane and the lower mental plane is all planetary stuff that's not spiritual and not a principle. But the soul and the triad are real and they persist. And the monad finally becomes the identity after a person has proceeded with the purifications long enough. And each one is in that process, wherever they are and whatever they're doing. They're in that process of purification on every level, and it is happening, and they're moving into that spiritual kingdom permanently so that you don't go back and forth anymore. So you're inspired by it because, first of all, you realize that you're living as the um, vortex of energy or the Lord of the world, and that there is no other vortex. It's only the new group of world servers that can be used. It's only human hands and feet in incarnation that can make the difference. And so to be on the planet living in the fifth kingdom is a very important part of the evolution of the planet Earth. Thank you, Gloria. I think, at, at least for me, it's a very new formula, living as a fifth kingdom, even though it's a big part of the teaching, but just to think in that terms is very important shift for all of us, and especially like now as we're in Virgo full moon. Yes, I think it's, I think I think until a person is willing to consider that as going on, and that's what's happening, that there's always the possibility of letting it go or not thinking it's really your responsibility. But believe me, it is your responsibility because we're the only ones who have that energy within our consciousness. We're the only ones who have identified with it as our reality. And that makes it our responsibility. And we must apply it. And we must do our duty in relation to it. And it's a joy to do it. It's the greatest joy there is in life. We are now approaching to the time when um, we would go into meditation. And I think that's a very good connection to what you just said that would take us into meditation. There are much more questions that we just don't have time to I don't have time to read them that you would answer them, but... You can send them to me. 
Yeah, I, I send them to you, and uh, there, I would just briefly say that most of those questions are technical questions about the the Robert Miller's curriculum and about the the uh, Jamin, uh, the United Nations model. So we would post information about those uh, those along with the archived recording of this webinar. So there will be more information uh, on both the Robert Miller schools and uh, uh, global elementary model of United Nations. It will be on our website. Okay. So please, Gloria, take us into meditation. All right. We've been considering the spiritual possibilities throughout the webinar, but we're approaching the specific Virgo festival. And knowing that our individual and unified consciousness is nurturing and fusing with the Christ. We are understanding that our identity with the soul is an identity with our discipleship. And we remember that the soul is a group entity. So being one with the soul is being one with the soul of all. We are one with all humanity. and invoking the energies of the spiritual triad, the Atmic energies, the Buddhic energy, and the higher Manasic energy. We bring those into our conscious realization as an expression of the will of God. We do not remain apart from it, looking at it. We involve ourselves in this identification totally, as I am the mother and the child, I God, I matter am. to use the great invocation as the mantra
to complete the meditation. We first realize that the light streaming forth is the light of the soul. And the love streaming forth is the Christ energy. And the will is the manifestation of the plan implemented by love. So we would sound the great invocation within our own heart and remember that the invocation and evocation is simultaneous. From the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, Let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of humans. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Oh.
As this meditation is completed, you realize that the avatar of synthesis and the spirit of peace and the Lord Buddha. have increased the potential and the power for good. Thank you, Gloria. Okay. Yeah. Is it all over? We still have a few minutes. So oh. I would want to ask you to share before we end our webinars. What do you think is important for us in this full moon, in this year? in this cycle, what is important for us as disciples? What, how do you see it? I think if we, if we are capable and can use all of our spiritual strength, because that's the only place to get it. You can't use personal will. It must be spiritual will to hold to the highest consciousness for as long, of it, as long a part of every day as possible. There is nothing and nowhere, no time that you can't be aware that you are a spiritual being because that's the truth. And so, even in the daily duties, if you can hold to that identity, then actually the laws work out so that it pulls to you all that you need to be. It magnetizes to you all that you need to have the strength to persist even though at the same time it usually will attract tests to your persistence. But that creates growth. And the growth is certain and will stay with you throughout the rest of this life. So the 
the Virgo energies are a blessing. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining the meditation today. This is the first five days of the full moon. So let's be connected in our meditation and do our part of work. Thank you. Alexander, I am grateful for the opportunity to participate in the webinar. Marty is too. Thank you. And uh, I want to invite everyone to participate in our coming webinars. That's the next webinar is going to be on September 14th. It's another cycle that we follow throughout the year. It's a cycle of equinoxes and solstices. So please join us for the Planetary Healing Meditation with Mats Bronsted from Denmark. And then after that, the next webinar will be on October 2nd. It's going to be the Libra New Moon webinar, and we will continue our cyclic meditation focusing on different sustainable development goals. And at the Libra New Moon, we will meditate on goal number five, gender equality. And the next full moon webinar, it's going to be Libra full moon webinar on a, uh, actually not October 2nd, it's a mistake here. Uh, it will be, the date is not defined yet, um, and we will together, we will invite you to ponder together and meditate on the topic of right balance together with Maria Caligari and Bart Cook. And let's end our work today sounding the Gaia tree together. Um. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual sun, hidden by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. And P.S. Scriptum story, there was a 
also a mistake with the date for the Equinox webinar. It's going to be uh, next uh, Thursday, September 21st, I believe. Yes, September 21st. Thank you for bringing that to my attention.